They are dying eggs, Keelan replied, holding Balint by his ankles as his son climbed over his shoulder to hang upside down and babble at Jade and Amber. He grimaced when he felt the wetness of drool as it soaked the back of his shirt. Trisha said the children will look for them. Why would they want to look for them? And why are they making them different colors? Vox asked. He glanced at Riley to see if she was watching him. They had arrived yesterday to visit with Carmen and Creon. At first, he couldn't understand why she was so excited when they woke up this morning. He had thought it was because Rome had finally slept through the night for the first time. When she had popped out of bed and said that she was going to help color eggs, he thought he had misunderstood her. That was before he discovered the other women were in the kitchen talking about the same thing. Now his eyes glittered with mischief as he whispered to their son. Go get them, he murmured under his breath, before setting Rome down on the floor. You are going to get smacked again, Riley warned him, without turning around. The girls are not chew toys. What? Vox asked innocently. A hiss filled the air before a loud crash followed it. Riley threw an exasperated glance at Vox before she folded her arms and tapped her foot. She looked pointedly at where her son now sat under a crate, hissing at Amber, while Jade sat on top of the crate, holding him in. Amber had changed into a brilliant red and pink dragonling. She snorted and blew a puff of smoke at the hissing cub while Jade's purple and pink dragonling tried to grab the twitching tail sticking out the other side. A screeching yowl followed by crying filled the room when Jade was successful and chomped down on Rome's furry tail. Rome's whimper and tear-filled eyes blinked out from under the crate as he shifted back into a toddler. Jade, upset she had lost her current chew toy, shifted as well and started to cry. He'll never win against the two of them, Traylon warned Vox under his breath as he lifted Jade up into his arms so Vox could rescue Rome. Even I can't sneak up on them. They have this weird way of knowing when I'm close to them. Everyone turned when Abby cried out in surprise. Zohar had managed to climb up onto the table and was splashing in the colorful bowls. Kara laughed and reached for Amber, who decided that Zohar was having way too much fun on his own. Oh, Zohar, no, sweetheart, you aren't supposed to bathe in the bowls, Abby laughed as she tried to grab her son. Zoran, help me. She squealed as Zohar, covered in blue, yellow, red, orange, and purple dye, shook his little body. Color flew everywhere, drawing Spring and Phoenix's attention away from where they had been chasing the eggs they had stolen. It is for Easter. The Easter Bunny comes and hides the eggs for kids to find, Paul explained to Vox as he grimaced and wiped the colorful water off his face. He brushed a kiss over Morian's lips as she wiped a spot he missed. Thank you, he whispered in a husky voice. My pleasure, she replied with a grin, especially since you protected me from the worst of it. A rabbit hides eggs? Keelan asked, puzzled. Those are the long-eared creatures that I saw on your ranch, aren't they? I don't remember seeing them hiding colorful eggs. Ariel chuckled as she pulled Jabir out from under the table. He had crawled under it, chasing one of the eggs Spring had been playing with a few moments earlier. She cradled him in her arms as he clutched his prize, a bright blue egg in his small hands. Mandra looked over her shoulder to stare at the small oval object. Why would they hide them? Why not just eat them? Ariel playfully slapped his hand when he tried to take the egg away to study it. That's Jabir's prize. He found it. It was originally based on the German Easter hare, which gave children brightly colored eggs and toys for those who were being good. Carmen looked at her sister in surprise. A hairy Santa Claus? She asked with a quiet chuckle. Who is Santa Claus? Creon asked as he knelt down to accept the purple egg Phoenix held out to him.